speaker is Beryl Wiseman, who's a social rights activist, as well as a journalist and president of the Institute of Public Affairs of Montreal. And I'd like to thank him personally for sending buses from Montreal and Toronto here so that our guests could be here today. Beryl Wiseman. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause. Government of China, this is the firing line of freedom. When people, when people ask me over the past four or five weeks since Nazanin, the unstoppable Nazanin Afshinjan, called me and said, we've got to manifest something, we've got to demonstrate something, it may be too late for a boycott, but we need to do something. This is what was done. Et quand les gens demandent, mais pourquoi? Qu'est-ce que le but? Qu'est-ce que c'est done? Ça donne les choses innumérables, ça donne les choses assez importantes pour nous, pour, nos Canadi pour les Canadiens, pour notre caractère et conscience. This is not merely about theory. This is not merely about words, though, as Erwin Kotler has said in so many places and so many times in this country. Things like the Holocaust started with words. This is about real people and real responsibility. It was fitting that the first cultural community that was up here today were the Uyghur minority in China. Because this demonstration is not only for the concept of liberty, but for the reality of liberty for Canadian citizens like Hussein Shalil. So freedom from Hussein Shalil, from this firing line of freedom. We can no longer as a country talk merely about social justice. For a social justice only stops at our borders. If we think that we can affect nothing else in the world, then we are going to be flooded by our own mendacity and our own hypocrisy. And we are going to be mired in a fecklessness from which we as a country won't recover. But we can recover because individual actions and individual words make a difference. And as we just said on Parliament Hill when a reporter asked this question, what are the words? What are these reports, the, the 11 point index of human rights violation that Professor Kotler has put together? What do they mean? They mean everything. Because just, just, just 40 years ago, it was just 19, sorry, 30 years ago, it was just in 1978, when people thought that another tyranny could be treated with normally. When tout le monde a pensé que la libération économique avec l'Union soviétique would lead to political liberalization, it did not, it could not, it never would. But two brave men stood up in the American Congress, Senator Henry Jackson and Congressman Charles Vanek, and they said no. No à la tyranny. No Trump with tyranny. No business with tyranny. And the jackson Vanek Amendment that froze credits to the Soviet Union was followed two years later by the Helsinki Final Act with most of Western Europe signing on. Words make reality. Actions like this create a new reality. Yes. Governments like that have to pay attention. Yes. And just as the wall came down in Berlin, so will all walls come down. Parce qu'il n'y a pas une résistance à les mille places quand les gens arrivent pas seulement ici, mais à Washington aujourd'hui, à Londres, à Paris. Et comme le sénateur Robert Kennedy a dit une fois à Soweto dans l'Afrique du Sud, when people stand up against oppression, against hatred, for human rights, from a thousand centers of energy and daring, they create a wave so strong that it will tear down any walls of oppression and resistance. And that is what we are here for today, to tell Canadians that we can be an important part of that wave of freedom. Thank you.